Uh, in Salim Youssef's group at McMaster University uh, in Hamilton, Ontario, they have been spearheading a 17 country study uh, called the Pure Study. Uh, and in this study, they have been analyzing multiple lifestyle factors and outcomes in people in 17 different countries. And they're adding to the volume and adding to the duration. This is an ongoing uh, uh, thing. And you may have heard this last summer that they published a paper that said when they looked at saturated fat intake in people um, in 17 different countries, uh, what they found was as you um, uh, reduced the saturated fat intake mortality it, under 10% of energy per day of, of one's, one's fat intake, uh, mortality goes up, but there's no mortality increase at high end. You know, and they published that in the New England Journal of Medicine. This came out in the New England Journal in 19, or 2014. And what they did was rather than ask people, how much salt did you eat yesterday? Which is how sodium intake is often analyzed in, in epidemiological studies. And this is epidemiology. What they had people do was do a first morning void, pee in a cup in the morning. Uh, now that's not the, the gold standard. The gold standard is have them collect every drop of urine for 24 hours. But in people wandering around in Bangladesh, you know, carrying a two-gallon jug to measure, you know, I've done 24-hour urine collections on myself for 45 straight days as a research subject, and man, it really inhibits your social life. <laughs> it's not realistic. So they got an 85%, the R value, the correlation coefficient was 85.85 for first morning void to 24-hour uh, collections in a so sub-cohort of people. And what they found was, so it's, it's a validated assay. What they found was that if you look at mortality risk, this odds ratio is the risk of death from any cause. And 2.0 2 means uh, more than double. And anything under this line is less. But what they, you know, they found that the low point of, of mortality followed for 3 point, there's 102,000 people followed for 3.7 years. This is a huge data set that the low point of mortality was between four and five grams of sodium intake per, or excretion per day. And we assume that, because we don't store sodium in the body in any significant amount, that intake equals excretion. Our, my government dictates that we should all eat 2.3 grams of sodium per day. And if you have congestive heart failure or hypertension, you should eat even less. And that's associated, associated with a 50% increased risk of mortality compared to the four to five grams per day. Now add to that that when you're on a ketogenic diet, you experience something called naturesis of fasting. Natrium is the Latin word for sodium. It's increased sodium excretion through the kidneys. It appears to be due to increased production of good prostaglandins in the kidney. Uh, because we know that because if you take Motrin, it'll shut off. I don't know if anybody here has taken two Motrin after a hard exercise and they gain four pounds the next day. And that's from fluid retention caused by shutting off the naturesis of fasting. But the point is, that if anything, the sodium requirement, if somebody's excreting this at a more rapid rate, would be on this side of, of this point. And so our range that we recommend is five grams a day, unless somebody has ongoing hypertension or congestive heart failure. And for people exercising in the heat with greater than, greater than expected sodium losses due to sweat, uh, they can go as high as eight grams per day. I mean, this is frightening. This is like telling people they should eat 75% of their calories as fat. <laughs> And we tell them to do both, which is why we have to have such an intensive education and support system, because we're practicing multiple heresies. But when we do this here, people don't have symptoms of the Atkins flu or keto flu.